Hi, I'm Bob Vosper. Thank you for spending the time to listen and I hope improve via our video series. The upcoming video is the introduction to my latest book called Organizational Evolution. I've learned over the years that the more I give away, the more I get in return. So, we'll be producing a series of videos and posting them for you one chapter at a time. Starting with Chapter 1, we'll also provide a reinforcing exercise at the end of many videos, hoping to improve retention amongst whomever shares in the experience. These videos will provide more value for your team if you schedule a group sit-down session, perhaps a luncheon brown bag where everyone listens, completes the exercises, and then joins in a discussion. The series will provide a year's worth of monthly sessions. As always, we'd appreciate your feedback. Simply email us at feedback at 9gs.org. Now, let's get on to the video. Introduction. What is past is past. Today we start anew, and what we do today will make our life for tomorrow. William Thompson Hansky. In November 2005, my wife Cindy came home from a physical and let me know that she had cancer and that it appeared to be advanced. In January 2006, she had surgery which included the removal of several lymph nodes, all of which were later found to be cancerous. In the three years since, She's faced significant challenges, worked with some great medical teams, and overcome the cancer. The experience, of course, changed our perspective in a significant way. We spend a lot of time on the road doing workshops, keynotes, and coaching. We oftentimes encounter high stress levels, not focused on those priorities we know should be at the forefront. As a 20-something fighter pilot, I was consumed with being number one in all my pursuits. During Air Force pilot training, my class would head out for social time on Fridays and Saturdays. I'd be studying for the next week's activities, spending time with the simulators outside the normal business hours, or focused on whatever else would improve my chances for winning the race. I found success as defined by the mindset I carried back then. I graduated high in my pilot training class and left other training assignments as top gun on top of academics. I was fortunate to fly amazing airplanes and was ranked high amongst my peers. Those I worked with also carried this need for not only speed, but for winning every competition, flying the finest aircraft, and being named number one in daily, weekly, quarterly, and career-long competitions. As a 30-something corporate executive, working 60 to 80 hour weeks, I climbed the ladder and by some measurements found great success. As a 40-something, it became clear that life was moving along quickly and my lifestyle may have been at significant cost to my wife, to my family, and to my friends. All of a sudden, I'm in my mid-fifties facing the reality that life on Earth is finite and, as a family friend likes to share, hey, none of us are getting out of this alive. William E. Brown. Psychologists often speak of significant emotional events. It often takes one of these to affect real change in those of us who often move forward while remaining invincibly ignorant and without proper perspective. Cindy's cancer was a significant emotional event for our family. On a professional level, my keynote speeches are much better than they were pre-cancer. They're from the heart, and in spite of the risk that my macho friends from the past will call me a wimp, I find myself more sensitive than before and truly believe I'm approaching my work from a new perspective. My priorities have changed. The time I spend with family is much more important, my free time is more valuable, and I purposely schedule more time for a new set of high-priority items. What are your priorities? I've shared with many an audience the results of a national survey from several years back in which the respondents named their top three priorities as family, spirituality, and health. Yours may be in a slightly different order, but they're probably similar if you've taken the time to look at life through clear eyes. I've read a couple books this past year that have helped me find a better perspective. One is called Chasing Daylight by Eugene O'Kelly. In the book, he describes a set of concentric circles defining relationships. The inner circle is composed of those people who will be with you when you're reclining on the inevitable deathbed. Those are the very important relationships where we should spend our limited resources. 
You've probably heard about it on the news, listened to interviews with the author, or maybe even read the book titled The Last Lecture by the late college professor Randy Pausch. His focus on principles and priorities is right on the mark. So, take a look at your upcoming week's calendar. How do your top priorities fare? I'll bet you haven't scheduled an appropriate amount of time for the truly important things. Are you making it to the kids' soccer games? Are you spending one-on-one -on -one time with your significant other? How's the health? Do you spend time for personal reflection? I'm a huge fan of Stephen Covey. His book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, is well-founded. Today I received an email from my friend Paul Redhead. Each day he forwards a quote of the day, and as if by fate, today it's by Stephen Covey. There are three constants in life, change, choice, and principles. Stephen R. Covey. Let's focus on the choice part of his quote. Great segue, right? You have a choice. You can change your life, focus on proper priorities, learn to say no, spend time bettering your life and improving the lives of your coworkers, and have a better chance of reaching those levels of success that are measured by what really, really counts. Now, over to Heather. This book is about evolution. It is about making changes for the sake of yourself, your team, and your organization. Here's how to start. First, reflect. You need to get your head in the right place. When you listen to flight attendants' briefings, you may have noted the suggestion that to be truly effective, you need to put on your oxygen mask first. If you don't take care of yourself, you won't be able to take care of your family, your team members, or your customers. Observe. You need to know what is going on with your team members and your customers. What are their perceptions? What are their expectations? It may not come as a surprise to you, but some organizations with whom we've worked say that they do not want to know where they stand. We've had organizations say that since the benchmarking shows them below average, they don't want to know any more of their science. We walk away from those relationships. Here's a great quote to support this concept. If there is an elephant in the room, introduce it. Randy Posh. Finally, improve. This is a time for being smart and balanced instead of panicked and scattered. Use a process. It doesn't need to be complicated, but you should execute it rapidly and then work towards having a more productive life. The concepts in this book are not rocket science. My request is that you consider the model. Think about committing to a simple process and understand that you aren't perfect, that you are probably not making effective use of your team and that there is a simple solution that can save time while improving performance and productivity. If you are too proud to accept feedback, empower your team and make changes for the better. You should walk away. We can't help you. So now the question that begs to be asked is, are you going to spend the rest of your life focused on urgent but unimportant things? Reflect upon this question from the following perspective. At your funeral, Will the eulogy be a story about the great job you did with your top priorities? Will you have lived a life of contribution? Will your family, your spirituality, and your health have been at the forefront? Will your business team, who will spend most of their waking hours at work, have grown and learned from a great leader? Do they spend their lives working in a wonderfully empowering, high recognition, high communication environment where service and support are paramount? I hope you find the proper perspective. I wish you all the happiness life can bring, and I encourage you to be prudent in all that you do with your team and your business. The choice is yours.